When I started using Obsidian, I copied some of my notes from Evernote, uh, installed a bunch of plugins. I needed to understand how that feature worked because there is nothing like that on Evernote. And when that learning was complete, I deleted all the notes, removed all the plugins to start with a blank canvas. The plan was to understand, use Obsidian for a while to understand my needs and only then go look for the specific plugins. This is the strategy I always use to organize things in the digital or uh, real world. I let the mass in and try to do my work. And with that mass, I start to understand where things should be to help me be more productive. There's an article, you'll find a link here and also in the description below. Uh, I think you should read it. It's a different way. It's a different approach to uh, organizing things. And talking about mass, we'll have to deal with a little bit of it today because there is a renovation going on in the office next door. Okay, uh, one of the most important features, in my opinion, uh, of Evernote is the chronological order ordering of notes. Obsidian has something like that. You can order your notes in chronological order, but there is no, no single place. There is no nowhere you can see all the lists, a list of notes. Maybe there is a plugin for that. <laughs> anyway, the first thing I did was to create a template to add to each note, and that template has today's date. Here's how I did it. It It's called, the title is note. It, I, I also have this property here, uh, title, because as you already know, there are some characters that we cannot use in the notes title. So here's where I create the note the way I want it with all the characters. Uh, I also have tags below here. And this weird code here. This code will create today's date, but it's not as complicated as it looks. Uh, let's go to editing mode and then source mode. And this is it. All you have to add is date column uh, and the format year, month, and day. So now if I create a new note and select the note template, here we have it today's date. This is pretty manual still, uh, this, but, but this was happening at the very earlier stages of my uh, Obsidian journey. You soon see how I made this even better. But before we move on, I have to ask you a favor. If you are part of more than half of the people who come back to watch other videos here in the channel, but are not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. Okay, let's keep moving. Next in the list was the calendar. I really love Evernote's calendar and I needed to find a plugin to do the same thing here. Remember the mass? <laughs> I tested a lot of plugins and ended up with one that doesn't really do what Evernote's calendar does. Well, let me show you because it does things in a way. <laughs> I liked it a lot. If you want to try it, search for OZ calendar. And there's a lot of uh, settings here. Pay attention to the date settings. Uh, I'm using year, month, and date. If you, you're not using that format, you have to, to change the format. Uh, and also, my date is in the property uh, called date. If you use a different, for example, some people use created, you have to change. I don't remember, uh, uh, to be honest, if this was already date or if it was created. Anyway, you have to, this has to match what you have here. So I have here date and the date format. Okay. Uh, it's already here. Uh, I, it was hidden but it will create this icon here. And here we have a calendar and you already see it here. This is today's note. There's a little dot here. If I change the name here, new note, whoops. 
There we have it. And let's change this. No, no, I'm going to use this other one here. This is also untitled, but here's where it helped me kind of do what I can do in Evernote. Let's add again here the note template. And as you can see, there is now two notes uh, below the calendar, new note and untitled. So let's call this note two. And instead of eight, I'm going to change this day here to the 10th, for example. And look at this. Now I can, let's say today is the 10th. When I arrive at today, <laughs> I already have the note here. So if I'm preparing for a meeting, I can add the meeting note, uh, the meeting date to that note. And when the day arrives, I'll have that note there. And of course, I can go back in time. Let's add, for example, the 2nd of January here. And if we go back here, here is the note, note. Too. Pretty cool, right? I, I really like this one. Let's go back to the settings. I have another thing to show you. You can set a default folder for the new notes. So in my case, it's YouTube. So let's go back. If I create a note from this plus sign here, it will create it will be created inside the notebook folder. Create note. We go to YouTube. Here it is. And there's the date, today's date. In this case, it's not using the template. It's just adding the date because this is today's date and this is the calendar. So that's how it works. So I, I don't really use this. Uh, you soon see how I do it. And of course, you can go back and forth and you can click here to, let's say I'm taking a look at the 11th. I can click here to go back to today. And of course, you still have all the old features available. I can go to tags, I can go to properties and go back to the calendar. But if I'm using it like this, there's a lot of space here that is empty. Now, remember our uh, tasks. If you haven't watched, there's a video about the tasks plugin. You'll find a link here and in the description below. This is my tasks account, but in my real account, this tasks note has uh, more information. For example, notes related to my next trips, they are here. But yeah, that's, that's a topic for a future video. What I wanna show you is that we can grab this. I'm gonna click here and grab this with my mouse and add it to this spot here. I can even rearrange this to make it uh, a little taller or shorter. This is how I use it most of the time here at the office. But if let's say uh, I'm traveling and, I, and, and I'm writing using my tiny MacBook Air screen, I can always click here. And now that it's gone, of course, I can also click here. And now I have a lot of space to write. But there is more. That's just the right hand side of my dashboard. As you can see, there's a little space, a little extra space at the left hand side as well. So what should I put there? A while ago, I was talking to a friend and complaining about chronology, uh, rather the lack of chronology, the lack of a list where I can see all my notes in chronological order. And sure enough, there is a plugin. So the one he suggested is called Recent Files. And that's it. It will show you your recent files, the ones you just use. You can limit it to a number. Uh, I guess 50 is good enough. What it does is create this kind of this clock here. I can, of course, make this a tab, but what I want, you already know, right? <laughs> is this right here. Again, I can rearrange this. And now when I'm working with my files and I wanna go back to a note I just used, I can click here. 
Pretty cool, right? But there is more. Remember the template thing? There is a way to make that better. Uh, in my real account, I have like five or six templates that I use. I have one for the note. I have one for uh, uh, my blog posts and so on, the clients and many other templates. I guess five or six. And here's where another plugin comes in very handy. But first, uh, I have to create a new template here. Let's create a new note. Let's call this one clients. Uh, and let's create a new one, a blog, blog post. Okay, so now let's pretend I have other information inside the note, but the important part is that I have more than one template here. And this one is so new that I don't even have it here in my tasks account. The name is auto template trigger. You already know where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> Install. Enable. Okay, this is it. You don't have to do anything else. But every time I create a new note, create a new note, look what's going to happen. I have now a pop up window asking me what is the template you want to use? Well, note, of course. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Now I'll, all I have to do is add a, a, a title uh, and, uh, and a date, can be a past date, a future date, or leave it as it is with today's date. Now I have my dashboard, the one that is making me happy right now. And of course, this will change. You know me, uh, things change all the time because circumstances change and we need to find different uh, solutions. But there is one more detail that I want to show you. Uh, I don't usually, uh, my, my Obsidian is not uh, like this. Uh, I don't use the, the, the white background. I use it in uh, dark mode. But for the videos, white is always better. So here we go. I'm going to change this appearance. I want the dark mode. This is already much better to my taste, but I don't like this color. Uh, and remember my green phosphor monitor? Uh, I mentioned it uh, on, on Mastodon. Uh, it's going to take a while. The restoration is going to take a while. So I decided to change this to a similar color. This is 45, 145, 45. And this is how I use Obsidian every single day. My dashboard and this Apple II vibe. If this video was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It helps a lot. But if you want to help even more, please consider becoming a YouTube member or joining my Patreon. Thanks for watching. See you soon.